Japan is furious at China. And it is also not very happy with Japanese companies working with Chinese tech engineers. The recent event has a message for companies that want to do business in Japan. Do not work with the Chinese or face the risk of being banned. And as for the Chinese people working for Japan, they have nothing but Xi Jinping to blame. Hi, and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I am your host, Shubhangi, and in this video, we shall discuss how the Chinese Communist Party's hostile ways may make Japan take a hostile turn against Chinese employees. Let's begin. A development that comes as a stern message to all Japanese corporations around the country, the Yoshihide Suga government in Japan recently closed doors for popular messaging app Line, owned by SoftBank Corporation's Z Holdings, after sensational news reports came out suggesting that the Chinese engineers of the company working in a remote location of Shanghai had compromised the details of its users after they were allowed access to the servers in Japan from 2018. Local media reports stated that four engineers at a Line affiliate company in China who perform system maintenance for Line were allowed to access servers that contained the names, telephone numbers and email addresses of users. Chief Cabinet Secretary Katsunobu Kato announced that Line was temporarily halted and a task force was being set up to look into the matter. At a news conference, Kato said, The government will halt the use of line when handling sensitive information for now and set up a task force swiftly so that usage guidelines can be compiled soon. Internal Affairs and Communications Minister Ryota Takeda had ordered local administrations to stop collecting questionnaires and opinions as well as providing services and receiving all types of applications from the population in Japan through this messenger. The message is clear to the likes of LINE that they risk being banned completely if they employ the services of Chinese techies who for all potential reasons could be United Front activists or spies hiding in plain sight and trying to infiltrate the sensitive tech sector of Japan. The temporary ban also sets a precedent for other companies to follow who will now be more alert and scrupulous into the hiring of Chinese people. The greed of the Chinese Communist Party to harvest the tech data of its enemies can now possibly lead to Japan disbarring the Chinese tech engineers or if push comes to shove, not even allowing them entry inside the country. And this comes as a shocker to those ordinary Chinese folks who just wanted to make an honest living in Japan. Japan's antipathy and resentment towards China are understandable because in recent times the Middle Kingdom has done everything possible to rile up its otherwise docile neighbour. First, it was the Covid pandemic and the subsequent postponement of the Tokyo Olympics that caused a severe dent in the bilateral relationship. The country was keen on ensuring that the quadrennial multi-sports event goes as planned, but China and its irresponsible handling of the deadly virus caused a full-blown pandemic, which in turn crippled the entire planet and delayed the sporting mass event. Secondly, despite going through a change in guard at the top political brass with former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe stepping down due to illness, the new Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga has not let down the intensity against China and has battled with even more ferocity. Tokyo is standing its ground when it comes to the Senkaku Islands which China claims to be its own and calls the Diaoyu Islands. Japan had purchased the Senkaku Islands from a private owner in the year 2012, yet Beijing keeps claiming the Japanese islands. Chinese vessels routinely intrude into Japanese waters and hover around the Senkaku Islands for several days on a trot. Suga knows that China doesn't intend to give up on its expansionist ambitions here. Japan is taking some major anti-China decisions, at a time when the Middle Kingdom shows no signs of exercising restraint in the East China Sea. While Chinese President Xi Jinping keeps urging Japan's Prime Minister Suga to repair Sino-Japanese ties, Chinese intrusions into Japanese waters have become a regular feature. As a result, Japan has strengthened friendships with several Southeast Asian countries and is in the process of pulling its companies out of China, thereby giving a jolt to the CCP. 
Japan has actively worked round the clock to jumpstart the Quad and bring all its members on the table to form a concise policy against China and its expansionist plans in the Indo-Pacific. Despite Joe Biden being hesitant to carry forward Trump's legacy, it is Japan, India and Australia that are currently carrying the Quad and putting constant pressure on Beijing, which otherwise would have gobbled up one country after another. Recently, Tokyo expressed its support for Taiwan and also empowered the Philippines to take on Xi Jinping's naval invasion in the South China Sea. Overall, Japan has been holding China accountable for its aggression by showcasing an unsparing attitude.